At times, it becomes very important to configure alert and monitoring on Azure services. And here I am on my Azure portal and in this demonstration, I'm going to do exactly the same. I will be configuring alert and monitoring on the Azure automation account. In case you are unaware of what an automation account is and how it works, you can watch my previous recordings on Azure Automation where I have discussed specifically on PowerShell runbooks, the desired state configuration as well as the update management. Back here again and as you can see, I am within the Automation Accounts page. Now here I have configured two things. The first is the update management. This is under update management. If you click on it, you will see there are two virtual machines, VM1-Windows and VM2-Windows. They both show as compliant and they have been scheduled for the update management. We also have the desired state configuration. So if I click on it, you will see further details. Here you go. You will see VM1-Windows. This was configured for the state configuration and it shows as compliant. Now, I wish to configure alert monitoring for the automation account. So I'll scroll down and under monitoring, I'll click on alerts. Now I have two ways to configure the alert rule. One is by clicking on the create alert rule button here in the center of the page, or I can click on create from the top navigation and then select alert rule. Now here I am on the create an alert rule page and I'm on the conditions tab. If I go back to the scope, it will show me exactly what is being configured. So I am under Azure training subscription where I have ATCSL as a resource group and within that I have ATCSL automation which is the resource where I'll be configuring alert and monitoring. Back to the conditions tab, here under select a signal, I have two options. One is signal type and the other one is the monitor service. So let me click on the drop down here. I have metrics, log and activity log. So I'll talk about metrics later, but let's see what logs are. Here you will see custom log search. And this is the signal type is log search. And this is for the log analytics workspace that shows the monitoring service. Now, if I click on the drop down again and select activity log, these are all the logs which are under administrative monitoring service. I'll click on the drop down again and now we'll talk about metrics. So these are the metrics, total jobs, total update deployment machine runs, total update deployment runs. So let me click on total jobs here. And here you will see in the chart, there is some activity, right? Now I'll scroll down a little and I will need to select the dimension because here it says use dimensions to monitor a specific time series and provide context to the fired alert. So because we are configuring alert and monitoring, that is what it says. Now under dimension name, I'll click on the drop down and I'll select status. The operator remains equal to and the dimension value I'll select as completed. So basically it will show me all the completed jobs. So we are good with this one. Under alert logic, I have to select between static and dynamic thresholds. So I'll let it remain as static. And if you want to know what this threshold is, I'll just hover over the information icon and it says static thresholds uses a user defined threshold value to evaluate the rule while dynamic thresholds uses machine learning algorithms, which are pre-built. So I'll let it remain as a static for the operator. I'll choose less than and equal to and for the aggregation type, I'll choose count. And for the threshold value, I'll just put in any random value, say three. The aggregation granularity period, I'll let it remain as five minutes. And for the frequency of evaluation, I'll set it as one minute. This is fine. We don't need to change anything. Finally, the signal logic says that bring me all the jobs where the status is completed and the total count is less than three in the period of last five minutes. And this is evaluated every minute. So we are good with that. We'll click on done. And if you see here, the condition is there. Now I'll click on next actions. And here there are two things. One is select action group 
and the other one is create action group. If I click on select action group, there is nothing because we have so far not configured any action group. So I'll close this and I'll click on create action group. And here I need to provide the details. The subscription is Azure Training. The resource group is ATCSL. For the action group name, I'll give it a name of total jobs. We are good. The display name is the same as the action group name. I'll click on next notifications. And here I'll click on the drop down for the notification type. So there are two options. One is email as your resource manager role. And the other one is email, SMS, message or push voice. So I'll select that and I'll give it a name. On the right hand side, you will see email, SMS, message, push or voice. I'll explain in a bit. So I'll give it a name of notification jobs. On the right hand side, I'll click on email and I'll give my email address. I can put my phone number as well and it will send me an SMS. All of the details are not needed. So I'll click on OK. Now that this is done, I'll click on next actions. Here under the action types drop down, I'll click on the drop down here. I have automation run book, Azure function, event hub, ITSM, logic app, secure web book or web book. So these are different options that you can choose and that action will be triggered once the alert notification is generated. I'll choose automation run book and here the run book is enabled. The run book source is built in. I can choose user, but as of now, we do not have any of the run books created. So I'll choose built in for the run book type. I'll click on the drop down and let me choose a stop VM. The subscription, I'll click on the drop down here and I'll choose my subscription, which is Azure Trading. For the automation account, again, I'll click on the drop down and I'll select ATCSL automation. See, this is one of the, you know, things that I would like Microsoft to work on where the automation account, we need to click on the drop down and select it. And similarly, the subscription. As of now, we have just one subscription. It should be pre-selected because most of the configuration of the Azure services that we do, the subscription is pre-filled. It automatically gets filled if you have just one subscription. So why not here? So this is something that I would suggest Microsoft to look upon and uh, have this subscription also auto-populated. And similarly, the case with the automation account. I don't know why it is taking so much time. And also because we are configuring this signal type or this uh, alert notification on the automation account itself, there shouldn't be a need to fill in the ATCSL automation account or the automation account that we ha already have. For the enable the common alert schema, I can choose yes. If it is a user defined run book, then the selection will always be no. It cannot be yes. But since this is a built in run book type, we can choose as yes. And then finally click on OK. It will take a couple of minutes. So I'll pause the video and return back once this is done. The action type is now completed and I need to give it a name. I will give it a name of alert action and then we are done. So we can click on review and create. And after it passes the validation, I can click on create again. So now this is done. What we can do is we can click on next details. Here, we need to provide the details again. And see, this is what I was talking about. The subscription is auto populated here as well as the resource group. So there shouldn't be a need to select the subscription in the previous screen that I had shown. Okay, back here. So severity, I let it remain as three informational. There are other severity as well. So critical error warning as well as verbose. So I let it remain as informational. That is good for the alert rule name. I'll give it the name of alert notifications. And there are two checkboxes here. One is enable upon creation. The other one is automatically resolve alerts. We'll let it remain as checked. And then we can click on review and create. Once the validation passes, I'll click on create. So this is also quickly done and we are good. Meanwhile, I received an email notification and it says you have been added to an Azure monitor action group. This is because when we were configuring the action, I provided my email address. So that is where it shows that you have been added to an Azure monitor action group. 
If I scroll down, here it shows the resource group name as ATCSL and the action group name as total jobs. So we have been added for the action group. So now if an alert is triggered, I will be receiving an email notification. So I'll close this and go back to my Azure portal here. After waiting for a while, I receive an alert notification. If you see here under total alert, it shows as one and under name it shows as alert notifications, which is informational. And it says the alert condition was fired. The user response is new. So if I click on alert notification here, it will show me further details. And here the alert condition is fired. So as an administrator, what I can do is I can change the user response. To do so, I'll click on the change user response and from new, I'll click on the drop down and I can choose either acknowledged or closed. So I'll choose closed and then click on save. I can enter comments as well, but for the demo purposes, that is not needed. So now that this is done, I'll close this and I'll click on the refresh button. It still shows as new. This will update after a few minutes. But meanwhile, I also received another email notification. And here it is. If you look here, it says your Azure monitor alert was triggered. I'll scroll down. The metric name shows as total job. And if you look here, the dimensions, it, the status shows as completed. The time aggregation is count. The period is over the last five minutes. And that is what we had configured. The operator was less than or equal to and the threshold was less than or equal to three. That is the count that we had provided. So this is the alert notification that we have received. And once the administrator receives this email notification, they can go back to the Azure portal and they can take particular action, whatever is intended as per the organizational policies. So this is how I configured alert and monitoring for my Azure automation account. You can replicate these steps and can configure alert monitoring for other Azure services as well. I hope you were able to understand and in case you have any questions, you can reach back to me and I'll be happy to help. Request you to please subscribe to my channel and if you like the video, please give a thumbs up and until we meet next time, keep exploring the cloud.